React 19 is stable, I will quickly list out the most important features for you. If you've been using a framework like Next.js, you have already started using many of these features. So for example, we now have server components in React. So by default in a Next.js application in the app router, all the components are server components by default. And one of the things we can do is we can mark them as async and we can fetch data directly in here without use effect. I can just fetch my data like this, I get a response and I can just render that out here and I get a bunch of posts here when I go to that page. A server component only runs on the server side. So you can reach out to your database and whatever you render out here as the markup, that will be sent to the client. React 19 also introduces the concept of actions. So in Next.js, you've probably heard of server actions but React talks about actions in general. So let's say I have a form here, for example, and if I submit this form, I want to send this data to my backend. So here in the Next.js application, what I can do, I have a form here with a simple input just for the title now and a submit button. Now, when I submit this, it will use what I specified here for action. What I specified here is actually a function and specifically a function that runs on the server only. I defined that function here in an actions file with use server at the top. This creates basically a what's called a server action. So this will run only on the server and I get the form data right here. I can then get the title from that form and log it here on my server. Or of course, what I could do is I could add it to my database, let's say. If I wanna see the log, I can open up my terminal because it's on the server side. I can say test create post and you can see I'm getting a log right here. I don't have to do anything with fetch or axios or something like that to get the data from the browser, the client side, all the way to my server side. So here in the network tab, if I submit this form, you can see there is still a fetch call, but my framework does it automatically for me. So you can see a server action is actually just a network request, a post network request to the URL on which you're using the server action. So basically we can trigger a function on the server to run from the client side like this, but not only in forms, it can also be an on click or on submit, right? Like the old school way, I can still do it like this. I can still do it. And the major benefit of this is that we don't have to set up an API endpoint manually ourselves. It's all handled for us behind the scenes by our framework. So in this case, Next.js. But these actions are even more powerful because they integrate with some new hooks that we now also have. So we have use action state. This was previously called use form state. This is a bit confusing because it seems like you can only use those actions in a form, which is not the case. So I can use this create post wherever I want, also outside forms. So use form state has been renamed into use action state. So this is a useful hook because it will give us a pending state as well as an error state, which are two common things we often want to deal with. So instead of passing the action directly to the action attribute like this, we can, we can actually just pass it to that hook. That hook will then give us this action here, which we then actually use on the element. So now when that network request is happening, we get access to a pending state. So we may want to disable the input field, for example, while it's making that request. And we may actually want to change the text here, something like this. Let me actually add some delay here so we can actually see the pending state properly. I will make it three seconds longer. So I'm adding a timeout here. So now we can see the pending state. But besides that, we also get access to whatever we return from here. So let's say something goes wrong with adding it to our database. We would like to return an error. So here I'm returning simply a string here. Whatever I'm returning from that server action, I will get here as the first variable here. Sometimes people call this state because it could be anything I'm returning from here, but typically I'm only returning an error. Otherwise I'm not returning anything. So for me, that means it's always gonna be an error in case something gets returned from that server action. And I can then use that here to output that error message. So very nice hook. The only downside in my view is that the signature of your server action changes. So now we get a new parameter here which we need to add, otherwise we get an error. And this will keep track of the previous states, so basically what you returned previously. I haven't found great use cases for this parameter yet, so I'm not using it here, but we do need to add it. Now if I submit, you can see we have the pending state and after a couple seconds, we get our error state like this as well. I have a dedicated video on the use action state hook, so check that out. So that's the use action state hook, and previously it was called use form state. Besides that, we also had another hook that you may have seen before, which is the use form status hook. And so this one has been renamed into use action state, but this one now is actually still part of React 19. So I can use that hook in a child component here in the form. So let's say I create a dedicated component for that submit button. I can replace it like this. Now in this component, I have the use form status hook and it also gives me access to the pending state. So now if I try that again, you can see 
I still have the pending state. Another hook that integrates very nicely with these actions is the use optimistic hook. So let's say below the form, we want to output a value here that the user typed when we submit the post. Remember, submitting the post can take a couple seconds, but we would like to immediately show it here. And we know that usually it's going to succeed. So we might as well be optimistic about it. This hook, so this hook is actually quite similar to uh, the use state hook, but this is for that optimistic use case. I'm going to have an optimistic title value, which I will just output here below. Initially, it's uh, nothing so we don't see anything here so instead of directly writing the server action like this we can provide a client side function basically just a normal javascript function here because what we want to do here is we still want to invoke that server action right and so this needs to become async but before we do that, we also want to set the optimistic title. Now with an action, you will get the form data like this. So we still want to pass the form data to our server action like before. And actually, since we're passing it like this now, not with the use action state hook, we now also don't have this first parameter anymore. So we can get rid of that if you invoke it like this. And now we can also take the title, right? So we can just get the title like this and just set the title like that. Now, before we make that network call, to our server side, we're first going to hopefully see the title. So let's see what we get. You can see I already get the title here. Let me zoom in. Let me show it again. So new awesome title. You can see it immediately shows me here. It's optimistic while it's making that network call, waiting for that response from the server action. We can already show a value right here. Right, so we can be optimistic about it and it nicely integrates so as the server action is finished it will actually also automatically remove it right so this entire thing is actually also an action an action can be a server action like this one if it runs on the server but an action is can also be a client side function basically right so an action is just a function that's how i think about it and we can invoke another action and in that action we can invoke another action right in this case a server action so don't worry if you're a little bit confused uh, all of the, a lot of this is new we talk a lot about this in my react and next.js course as well so i highly recommend that you check out that course you can find a link in the description react 19 also has some new things for ref so let's say we need to control that submit button from a parent component we need to add an in this component but we need to have access to it here so we could create the ref here but it needs to be attached in this component so we need to pass it along so previously we could already do this you could pass a ref like this now to actually receive it here that was a major hassle but now it's just like any other prop I can just get the ref like this and attach it like this. Previously, if you wanted to do that, you had this monstrosity with the forward ref, and then you have these uh, types. So you would have to type the type of the ref. That was the first type, even though ref comes after the props here in the function signature itself. And then you have to type the props. So this syntax was not great to put it mildly. So we now have a much simpler syntax for that. If I want to type the ref, it's going to be something like this. There's also a change for the React context API. So previously, if you were creating a context provider component, you would do something like this, right? So you would have dot provider. You would use this variable from create context, and then you would do a dot provider. You don't need to do that anymore. So now you can just leave. Now you can just leave that off. Now, if I want to consume the context, I also have a new hook, the use hook. And one of the things I can pass here is that context variable as well. So I can pass submissions count context here. I do need to import it. And I can then destructure the submissions count. So now I can just use it like this. So now if I want to keep track, I also need to set the submissions count increment it. So I can use the setter function. And now after the server action returns, we increment the number here with context API. Is this a recommended way of consuming the context API right now? I would have to wait and see a little bit before I would recommend that. Uh, for now, I would stick to using a custom hook. But one of the benefits of the use is that it doesn't follow the rules of hooks. So if you have some condition, right, something like this, it can, it still works after that condition, which is not true for other hooks, right? So it's a little bit more flexible and it also consumes promises. So if you're fetching data in a function, for example, here, I'm fetching data, I'm returning this response json so what i'm getting here is a promise so when i refresh now i'm getting these posts here with this hook like this it's in that component the benefit is that you can wrap it in suspense and provide a fallback to to deal with the pending state so now if i refresh you can see there is well let me actually add uh, some delay here of one second now you can see when i refresh here you can see there is an init there was an initial loading state now it's unclear whether this is the recommended way of doing it it seems this hook is going to be mostly useful for libraries so you as an application developer may not work with it like this although it still has to be seen some of these things are very new and it takes some time before it's clear what the exact use cases are going to be as of recording i would probably not use the use hook what about react compile 
compiler. The React compiler can automatically optimize certain things in your React app. So for example, a very common situation is we have these posts, but we want to sort them, let's say alphabetically. Uh, just some computation on the post. Uh, this is where I'm sorting, but it's computationally heavy. So I don't want to do it every re-render. I want to avoid doing that as much as possible. So I can use the use memo hook. So it will only run this when this variable in the dependency array here changes. So po if posts change, we're going to run this posts.sort line again. And this is a manual optimization I'm adding here. The idea with the React compiler is that this is not necessary anymore and that it can automatically detect some of these things to optimize for us. However, the React compiler is not completely stable in this version yet. In Next.js, I can enable it in the next config like this. So overall, really nice release. It's nice to see React improving and uh, getting that version 19 stable. There are many other things as well, like better hydration messages. I know a lot of you are struggling with hydration errors in Next.js. I will make a separate video on this soon as well. I'm Wesley, by the way. I'm the creator of the professional React and Next.js course. If you want to master React and Next.js, I highly recommend you go through that course. I spend a lot of time and energy on it, making sure it's the best course available. We have a lot of great reviews. I would say check them out. You can find a link in the description. I'm also sponsored by Kind. I'm a brand ambassador for them. They have a wonderful solution for authentication. So if you're looking for a solution for authentication, check them out. You can find a link for them in the description as well. In any case, I want to thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.